Fancy being a spy, a tavern maid, an elementist, a bounty hunter? Me too! It's the city expansion for Talisman. Hello and welcome to the Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boiter and today we're going to be looking at the city expansion for Talisman. Now in order to play the city expansion you do need the base game of Talisman and we've done a review of that so you can check that out on our YouTube channel. So let's explore the city and spend some money. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look at what you get in the box. Now I'm going to take a really deep breath because you get a lot in this box. You get a city corner board, you get the city cards, you get the armory cards, you get pet cards, you get magic emporium cards, you get potion cards, you get stable cards, you get wanted poster cards, you get neutral alignment cards, you get alternate ending cards, and you get character cards. Six new characters with their little figures. Wow, that is a lot for your money. So I'm just going to go through all of the components one by one and explain how you actually play the city in Talisman. So it's pretty straightforward. As I say, there's a corner board and that just slots nicely into your main base game board. And you enter the city, as it sounds, via the city square. Now the city square does actually uh, do the same function. That's still usable, it is the city. You can visit the doctor, you can uh, visit the alchemist or the enchantress. But you can also now go to the bigger city, if you like, um, and you go, th you move into the city like you normally would. You would roll the dice and you would take your figure and you need more to get in. So say you were here, you're two away, you would need one, two, three, four to get in. So you do need more die roll than you actually need. So once you're in the city, movement is pretty straightforward. You move in the city now, there's little arrows dictating which way you go round the board. So you have to go with the arrows. You can't go against the arrows unless there's a special ability or an effect that forces you to do that. So you will just simply, you'll be rolling the dice and you'll be going round the board like that. It's very simple. Now, there are two sections to the board. There's the streets, which are these bits here. And also on the outer bit of the board, there are the shops, and that's where you can spend your money, and you can upgrade your weapons, and you can buy pets and things like that. So let's look at first at the streets. Now the streets, there are every space is the same apart from two spaces. Now the ordinary streets, you draw a card. Now in this case, it will be one of the dungeon cards. So let's have a look at these. Now when you're in the city, as opposed to drawing the base game adventure cards, when it says draw one card, you'll be drawing a city card. And these are beautifully illustrated, as you can imagine. And so you've got various different things, just like in the base game, that you'll encounter. So you can draw a card if you land in the streets. and the difference being here is that you can actually have up to three cards drawn on each space in the streets. Whereas in the base game, when it says draw one card, you can only have one card on that space. So potentially there can be three monsters that you'll have to fight or three uh, events, not events, but there'll be three things that you can encounter. So that's uh, the streets apart from the two separate, well, different squares. And they are the town square and also the city gate. Now with the town square you don't draw a card from the deck you actually will be drawing one that's already been drawn and is out on the actual board. So say you had a couple of them that were already out on the board you can actually move the nearest one is it the nearest one? Let's have a look. You can move no any one to that square so if you're on the town square you can actually draw that one to you if you want to encounter it so it might be a monster that you want to fight it could be you know where a stranger gives you a spell for free that kind of thing and that's really cool because obviously you can draw a card that you want that you might not be able to land on because of the die roll and you can draw that to yourself 
And the other one is the city gate. Now this is quite cool. This one, they have wanted posters. And what you can do is if you land on the city gate, you can buy one, two or three wanted posters. You pay a gold per wanted poster. And what these do is you will take one, two or three, depending on how much you've paid, and you will then try to claim this bounty. And how you do that is each wanted poster, there's going to be a target on them. And I'll just show you a few of these. Now the targets are either defeat another character or it will be defeat a monster or an enemy. So basically, if you're going to go, f if, if, for example, this one says wanted evil character. Now what you would do is you would pay your gold, you would take the wanted poster and you would carry it with you. And you would then be trying to take a life off one of the characters. Now it has to be match the alignment. So this one's evil, this one's good, and this one's neutral. Once you do that, you would fight them as normal and you would hopefully win, you would take their life and then you would come back to the city gate and you will then claim your bounty by simply discarding the card. Now as I said, there's another type of target which is an enemy one and there are different types of those. There's the spirit, the monster, the dragon, different type construct and again you have to match which uh, type of a monster, which type of enemy that is. Now you can actually um, say kill two spirits and claim that much gold. So what you would do is say you had two, uh, one spirit that was worth five craft points, well you would bring it back to the city, you would then claim five gold. If it was three craft points you would claim three gold. And it, if it was a character, sorry what I was meant to say on the character one, because there's no strength points uh, th that you would be able to claim as such, you will then just simply roll the die. So if you rolled a six, you would get six gold. So those are the wanted posters. That's pretty cool. Next up, we have the shops. Oh yes. Now the shops are pretty cool because you will be rolling the die and you'll be moving around the board. And then, as I say, they're on the outer edge of the board. And what you would do is you would roll the die and you will move in. So one, two, three, four. Or you could move one, two and the other two of your die movement would actually just be lost, but you need more to get into the shop. So you would roll the die and you would land in one of the shops. Now obviously you need some money. Now there are five shops that actually have purchase decks. The others are things like the jail, <laughs> and believe me, you don't want to be in jail. There's the wharf where you pay one gold and that means you can then leave the city. Um, there's other things like the Sooth Slayer, which can read your fortune. But the actual purchase decks come with the uh, where you can buy a spell. So these ones are potion. Sorry, I should say a potion. You can buy a potion. And there are various different potions. As you can see, healing potion, spell bound potion. And these are really cool. Now, as you've probably noticed, I don't know if you can see the finer detail on the card, but this is, it says magic object trinket. So these are objects but they're trinkets and that means that they don't count towards your carrying capacity and the same is of the wanted posters. These are actually trinkets. So that's a new feature in the base game. They, they, trinkets don't exist, they're just objects. So that's pretty cool. That means you can buy, you know, you can have as many trinkets as you like and it won't count towards your carrying capacity. So we have the Magic Emporium, which is this one here. And here you can buy things like a scroll, crystal scepter, um, the psychic crystal for various amounts of money. Um, and they're pretty cool. They're very powerful. Some of them just add uh, craft or strength to your total. We have the armory. So you can buy, you can upgrade your weapons. You can buy a stiletto, which is a dagger, um, not, not a lady's shoe. Uh, you can buy a bow, you can buy a great sword, you can buy a battle axe, you can buy a flail, that's always good, or full plate. So these are uh, beefier weapons and armour. You can also buy a pet, and this is a great feature, I love this. When you go to the uh, pet shop, you can buy a pet. Now the first one costs two gold, but 
every other pet that you then buy, it's two gold plus one gold per pet that you already own. But I think they're pretty worth it. So you can buy this one, for example, Singe. He's pretty good. He's a dragon. He's a follower. He adds one strength to your craft and one, uh, sorry, one point to your strength and one point to your craft. There's this one, Luna. Whenever you pay a fate to re-roll a die, you choose which result on the die and use that instead of re-rolling. So these can be pretty powerful and they're quite cute as well. It's nice to have a, a little pet as a follower. And the last of the decks are the stables. Now you can buy a riding horse, you can buy a mule, you can also buy a war horse and you can buy a horse and cart. Now again, these are pretty powerful. There's some great Mule, like the mule for example extra four objects you can carry the war horse allows you to add your combat score your strength and your craft together in in uh, in combat so they're pretty powerful now the way that you leave the city is pretty simple you just obviously will be going round and you will then exit the city as normal you will roll the die and you will need that more than is necessary to actually leave the city. So if I was here and I just rolled a two, one, two, I wouldn't actually be leaving the city. But if I was here and I rolled a two, one, two. So that's pretty straightforward. As I said, you can also pay a gold at the wharf and then you can teleport yourself to anywhere in the outer or middle region. So let's have a look at the characters. You get six new characters. Oh yes, six new characters. You get the spy, you get the tinkerer, don't know how you pronounce that, the Tinkerer. He's pretty cool. You also get the Elementalist. You get the Tavern Maid. You get the Cat Burglar. And the Bounty Hunter. And they come with a l whole bunch of special abilities that are really cool. I think my favourite is actually the Tinkerer. Um, and you do, of course, get the little figures. Now, I'd just like to point out, I do paint my figures. Not necessarily to the highest of standards, but I do paint them. I like the colour, it you know, adds a bit more flavour to the game. But these are plastic and they come uh, grey. So if you know somebody or you can paint them yourself, it's definitely worth doing. And you also get three alternate ending cards. Now with this, normally with the base game, you will go to the Crown of Command and you will start casting command spells to kill every other character. In this case, you can actually have alternate endings. You've got the Thieves Guild, you've got the Merchants Guild, you've got the Assassins Guild, and that ties nicely in with the theme of the city. Now, this one here is slightly different. I will show you that in a minute. Basically, just to point out, you've got different symbols on these alternate cards. There's the star symbol here, plus there's a, like a normal sort of triangle symbol plus there is also the uh, moon this one isn't included in this this is from another expansion but i wanted to just show you the difference with these you will pay you will choose at the beginning of the game which one that you want to play so you will read the rules and you'll find out what what it is that you would actually have to achieve in order to win the game for example with the merchant guild it's the first person to reach the crown of command with 20 or more gold it's as simple as that so you will actually all know what the alternate ending is but further down the line they did bring out more expansions and with uh, more alternate endings with a hidden or the moon symbol now these ones, what you would do is all the ones with the moon symbol, you would actually shuffle up and you will then place in the middle of the crown of command and it will be a hidden ending. You wouldn't know what ending is going to happen So until you get to the crown of command. That's when then you would flip it over and then you will read what it says on the card. Now that I, we prefer playing it with the hidden endings because obviously it's a little bit more exciting. And there is one in particular, and I won't spoil it for you just now, but that I really, really hate. And uh, it's caught me out a couple of times, but I will go into that when we come to it. So there's one more little thing to show you, and you also get four neutral alignment cards. That means that every character does, you are either good, neutral, or evil. And during the game, you may change your alignment. You know, you might have a, a witch that changes your alignment. And this just marks it. You just put it next to your card and it shows that you're actually neutral. Everyone can see that. And it's reminding you as well that you're neutral because some weapons you can't have if you're neutral, good or evil. 
Uh, so and events will affect uh, different alignments as well. So the city, what do I think of it? I think it's a fantastic expansion. It adds a little bit more flavor. Um, the other expansion that we've done a review of uh, a corner board is actually the dungeon. And that one is pretty much similar to the base game in terms of you go, you, you encounter the space, you draw a card. Apart from the treasure chamber where you actually uh, do um, fight the big baddie at the end, but with the city, it's not necessarily all about fighting. This is more about upgrading your characters, getting better weapons, getting a pet maybe, buying potions. It's that kind of uh, feel to it. And it really does add that extra layer to the game. It's, it's really good fun. So a good tactic is maybe to try and get some gold first of all. Go get the wanted posters, get some bounty, and then come back and upgrade your character. Thoroughly recommend this. What I would say is um, probably if you were to then get the dungeon first, then maybe this expansion, because this has got a few other things that can be a little bit more complicated, like the alternate endings. So definitely recommending checking out the city expansion for Talisman. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching the review of the city expansion for Talisman. Check out our other reviews, our other expansion reviews, and also we'll be reviewing some more Talisman expansions in the future. So please subscribe if you haven't done so already to those that have. Thank you so much. We enjoy your comments as well, so keep them coming in. And we may be doing a question and answer session in the future, so think up some questions, anything about fantasy, and uh, we'll be happy to answer them if we can, obviously. So, remember, we've got a Facebook page and we've also got a Twitter feed account, they we call it. But uh, check us out there. Until next time, fellow imps, keep it real. Why did I say that? Why did I say that?